This ECE 201 lesson titled Combining Resistors in Series and Combining Resistors in Parallel will introduce the concept of equivalent circuits and that in the context of circuit simplification. On the screen is a circuit that we've solved previously. We used all the element constraints, Kirchhoff's voltage law, Kirchhoff's current law, and solved for all eight circuit variables, the four currents and the four voltages. Suppose I'm the battery guy for this problem. Say that six volt source is a six volt battery and my task is to make sure that the battery is sized appropriately in terms of milliamp hours for the purposes of this circuit. So from my perspective the circuit would look like this. I'm going to show these as connection indicators. This shows if you will that the six volt source is going to be plugged into or attached to the circuit. And so my principal concern is going to be, what current does the battery have to supply to that circuit? What's the value of I? So can I in some way simplify this circuit? May I, for example, be able to look at this circuit, replace the individual resistors by just one equivalent resistance, such that the resulting current here, I, will be equal to 6 volts divided by R equivalent, and that I will be the same as for the original circuit. Well, the answer is definitely yes, and we will see the ideas behind that in this lesson. Let's start by saying what we mean by two circuit elements being in series. Two circuit elements are in series if they share a common node to which no other current carrying element is connected. So we can illustrate that on the board by drawing two resistors. There's an interconnect between them, a common node that they share, and then there's the rest of the, the circuit here. So if this is resistor RA and this is resistor RB, have a current IA and a current IB. Whatever current flows through RA by KCL has to flow through RB as well. One can have more than two things connected in series. If we have a third resistor here, R sub C, its current will be the same as IA and IB. So if element A is in series with element B, and element B is in series with element C, then element C is necessarily also in series with element A. I used the word element there, and this would be a good time to point out that these concepts are not limited to resistors. You could have any circuit elements A, B, and C, and they would be said to be in series. Let's generalize it to capital N resistors in series. Since they're in series, each of them has the same current flowing through them. I1 is equal to I2 is equal to I3. That's Kirchhoff's current law. By Kirchhoff's voltage law, minus Vs plus V1 plus V2 plus 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 Vn has to be equal to zero. And by element constraints, in this case Ohm's law, V1 is equal to I1 R1, Vn is equal to I N R N, and so on and so forth. So that's bringing KCL, KVL, and element constraints to bear on this issue. Combining KCL and Ohm's law, Kirchhoff's voltage law can now be written as Vs equals I times R1 plus I times R2 plus etc. etc. Then we simply factor out the I and write that Vs is equal to I times the sum of all the series resistors, or R equivalent is equal to sum of all the resistors in series. So in terms of just finding I, I can draw a simplified circuit, an equivalent circuit. The original circuit and this simplified circuit are equivalent in terms of what the voltage supplies V sub S sees. In other words, it's an equivalency from the rest of the circuit's perspective, where in this case, the rest of the circuit is just this voltage source V sub S. Or the rest of the circuit might be more complex. Here we see a circuit shown where it's in, actually in two different rooms. Parts in room A, parts in room B. Let's say we have Celine doing all sorts of measurements on her circuit here in room A. Joan, over in this room, is controlling what her Celine's circuit is connected to. Here we see two 10 ohm resistors in series. 
Suppose she changes her circuit by make, replacing those two 10 ohm resistors with one 20 ohm resistor. As far as Celine is concerned in room A, everything is exactly the same. From her perspective with the rest of the circuit, 20 ohms is the same as two 10 ohm resistors in series. Well, now let's move on to the definition of parallel connections. Two circuit elements are said to be in parallel electrically if there is a closed loop that contains only those two elements. So for example, R sub A and R sub B. If we look at the voltages VA and VB, then by Kirchhoff's voltage law, VA and VB have to be equal to one another. Things in parallel have the same voltage rise or the same voltage drop associated with them. Now, here we're showing these geometrically parallel. They both run vertically, but in the electric circuits, they don't have to look parallel. In this redrawing of the circuit, R, A, and R, B are not, vert are not geometrically in parallel, but they are still considered to be electrically connected in parallel. I can make a loop about this which only contains RA and RB, and by Kirchhoff's voltage law, minus VB plus VA is equal to zero. Now, expanding the concept of parallel connections to more elements, if A is in parallel with B and B is in parallel with C, then C is in parallel with A. That's illustrated in this circuit on the board. Here we see resistor A in parallel with B, we see resistor C in parallel with B. We can make a loop that just contains the two elements respectively. You can also make a loop that includes just RA and RC. So RA, RB, and RC are all in parallel. Next, let's use our element constraints and connection constraints to take a look at resistors in parallel. By Kirchhoff's current law, IS is equal to I1 plus I2 plus I3. By Ohm's law, I1 is equal to V1 over R1, etc. And by KVL, these are all in parallel. V1 is equal to V2 is equal to V3, and so forth. Since all the resistors are in parallel, then they all have the same voltage across them. Let's just call that voltage V. So, combining KVL and Ohm's law, KCL can now be written as IS is equal to V over R1 plus V over R2 plus etc. out to V over Rn. We can factor out the V that says IS is equal to V times the sum 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2, etc. Or we can use Ohm's law and express it as equivalent resistance as follows. We may simply write V equals IS times R equivalent, where R equivalent is 1 over the sum of all those reciprocal resistors. Here's another way to look at that situation. Ohm's law can also be written as I is equal to V times G, where G is the conductance. So KCL, IS equals I1 plus I2 is IS equals VG1 plus VG2, etc. Or just V times G equivalent, where G equivalent is the sum of the conductances. So going back to the screen, we now know that we can combine these two resistors in parallel. And from the, what's going on in the rest of the circuit's perspective, nothing will have changed. So from the rest of the circuit's perspective, we can replace this by one resistor with value R equivalent. And what is R equivalent equal to? Well, R equivalent is equal to 1 over 1 over RA plus 1 over RB. That algebraically is equal to RA, RB divided by RA plus RB. Shall we return to the uh, circuit we had for ourselves at the beginning of this lesson? We want to know from the battery's perspective, what does the rest of the circuit look like if we simplified it using parallel and series connections? I can't see any resistors in series here but I certainly see that 60 ohms is in parallel with the 30 ohms. Here's a loop that only contains those two. And 60 times 30 divided by 60 plus 30 is equal to 20 ohms. So as far as everything to the left is concerned, I can replace that two resistor combination by one resistor, and it will have a value of 20 ohms. Now moving along, 
I see that, oh, now that I've done that, this 40 ohm resistor is in series with the 20 ohm resistor so that I can combine them. R1 plus R2 is equal to 60 ohms. And I can use Ohm's law to say that the current, 6 volts divided by 60 ohms, is now equal to 100 milliamps. And if we watched our earlier uh, video lesson on connection constraints, we use KCL, KVL, and element constraints to solve for I equal to 1 milliamp with our 8 equations and 8 unknowns approach. Certainly this is a valuable tool to know how to simplify circuits from the rest of the circuit's perspective. Well, now let's apply these concepts to a little more complicated circuit. Let's suppose that we are asked to find the equivalent circuit looking into these terminals so that we can replace everything to the right of these terminals by one equivalent resistance. So you may wish to pause the video at this point to take a look at it, see if you can find anything in series, can you find anything in parallel, and can we get a handle and start to simplifying this circuit. Well, let me draw your attention to these two resistors, the 12 ohm and the 60 ohm. There's a loop that contains only th those two resistors. Those two resistors are in parallel. This node at the bottom, this node at the top are connected by a zero resistance wire. That's all one node. So please watch while I redraw this circuit to reflect that. ohm and the 60 ohm are in parallel and bringing the, that node together it would look like this. We do the arithmetic 12 ohms in parallel with 60 ohms is equal to 10 ohms. That's the equivalent resistance from the rest of the circuit's perspective. So we erase those two resistors. We replace them with one resistor between the two nodes and the value of that is 10 ohms. Now rather immediately we see that 10 ohm resistor is in series with this 20 ohm resistor so we can replace the 20 and 10 in series by one resistor which is a 30 ohm resistor. Let's ponder this situation. Does it look like we have three resistors in parallel, 30, 30, and 10? Let's be careful because there's a loop that just contains these two but this loop contains the 30, the 10, and the 25. So the 30 and the 10 are not in parallel electrically. What we can do is replace the 30 in parallel with the 30 by one resistor. 30 in parallel with 30 gives 15 ohms, so let's leave that resistor there, but now we're going to give it a value of 15 ohms. And now the 15 ohms is Again, not in parallel with the 10, but the 15 ohms is in series with the 10. 15 plus 10 gives us 25. And here we have the 25 ohms drawn in. 25 in parallel with 25 is 12.5 equivalent. And now we have three resistors in series. 5 plus 12.5 plus 15. So the equivalent resistance looking into these points is equal to 32.5 ohms. From the perspective of whatever we connect to this network, everything to the right of these connection terminals could have been replaced by a 32.5 ohm resistor. It would not affect anything in terms of what we connect to it in terms of the results in the rest of the circuit. This concludes this ECE 2.0 lesson. We've discussed the concepts of connections in series, connections in parallel, the idea of equivalent and a simplified circuits, and particularly we've considered how to deal with resistors in parallel and how to deal with resistors in series.